thank you so much for coming on, especially um, providing a little bit of history of why you want to cook this particular dish. I really like that part, that this is the 115th anniversary. If you want to go into a little bit of that when you introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. My name is Yvonne Chang, and I'm coming to you live from Kapolei, Hawaii. And um, it's actually pretty cold today for us. It's 66 degrees today. Um, there, and um, whoa, um, a little chilly for for Hawaii, but um. Yeah, so I'm sharing with you today um, bibinka, and it's um, a Filipino coconut mochi uh, dessert that um, it's actually one of my most requested desserts um, from my family and friends to bring to a party. And, um, you know, I wanted to present some the best that I can give. I'm not a home chef. I, I mean, I'm not a chef. I'm just a home cook and I love to eat and I love to feed people. Um, I feel food is a great way to um, start a conversation and build those connections um, with people. And I love to learn about different cultures. So today we're gonna learn about the, the Filipino culture here in Hawaii. Um, exactly uh, in December, 1906, which is 115 years ago, uh, the first Sakata, which is a contract laborer from the uh, Philippines, landed with 15 immigrant um, labor uh, workers to work for the sugar plantation. And from those 15 men, there were many, many more boats and contract workers that included my great-great-grandfather, um, sorry, great-grandfather. And um, I was fortunate to grow up on a sugar plantation and my father worked for the sugar company, all my uncles, um, my grandfather, he was an engineer at the boiler room. So it's just a long list legacy of sugar. So sugar is what um, sustained our family for many generations. And um, so this dessert is, um, um, as the laborers lived here in Hawaii for many years, it evolved over time. So it was traditionally steamed or baked or on a fire and covered um, with banana leaves you know, to, to cook. But um, we're gonna use modern technology. I'm gonna use a, show you a quick tip and trick with the microwave to melt stuff and toast stuff today. And I'm also gonna show you um, Oh, we'll be using, so it'll take about 20 minutes to prep and about an hour to cook. So during this time together, uh, when we are waiting for it to bake and cook, I would love to hear about your family traditions. So feel free to enter that into the chat and we'll discuss that. Or some of your, what do you guys like to do during the holidays? Or another question that I would love to know is, what's the most requested dessert or dish that for you to bring to um, a party? And um, without further ado, I think, is it cool to get started? Are you ready? Yeah, let's cook. Awesome. Okay, so for this dessert, you're gonna need sweet rice flour or mochiko. That's the most popular brand here in Hawaii. So you're gonna need um, the whole box. Oh, let me see it. All right, sweet rice flour. We're also gonna need sugar. How how is that different from like what I would call regular flour? Oh sure. So sweet rice flour is milled from um, and milled from sweet um, short grain mochiko rice. And um, they sell sweet rice flour in a lot of Asian stores, um, but it's uh, it's 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 a mainstay in a lot of um, Japanese, Filipino, a lot of Asian cooking. 
and it's you can also find it on Amazon if you can't find it in your lo local Kroger's or Publix. Um, um, we'll need flour, sugar, um, sorry, quick brown sugar. Uh, I'll show you this step. We just need this, it's just for the coloring on the top. Um, if you don't have it, it's optional to make that. Um, we'll need coconut milk, regular milk, um, total of three cups. So it's combined, so whatever this is, and then we'll add enough milk to make three cups. Um, we need some baking powder, butter, uh, baker's coconut, and vanilla. Mm -hmm. I love coconut. Yay. Some people don't, and it's fine. If you don't really like coconut, you could tweak it, or if you have a coconut allergy, you can tweak it, omit the coconut, and then instead of coconut milk, uh, Substitute it with condensed um, evaporated milk to get that rich creaminess and fattiness of the coconut, but not the taste of the coconut, unfortunately. So let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is we preheated our oven to 345. So I'll give you guys a sec to do that. That's 345, preheat. Yeah, we are using I, I regularly per, gonna, forget to preheat and then it takes forever to cook. <laughs> oh, sorry. Should I wait, pause for a sec to have everyone catch up or? No, it's all right. Okay. We're good. All we're right. Keep... We're good. Then we're going to get going. So, I'm sorry. What I'm doing is I melted some butter and I'm just Free, um, I'm just going to prepare my baking pan by brushing butter. I'm using melted butter, but um, pan, uh, any nonstick spray, whatever your taste is, um, will work. So I'm just brushing and preparing my pan. Nice and moist. And I've seen this made without the butter instead of butter, uh, coconut oil. Yes, you absolutely can do coconut oil. We just, we really just want something, an oil um, emollient agent to not have it stick to the pan. And the next step, which I forgot to add in the recipe, my mom reminds me, so thank you, mom, for remembering some of these recipes, is um, just, just sprinkling the bottom with brown sugar after the, um, after the butter. So we're just gonna sprinkle it just a tad, just to get some of the, um, just to get a, that color, that caramelized brown sugar, brown color. And it's, I just, you know, it's just like a spoonful, uh, maybe two, sorry. And this is again, optional. You just want that, that nice color. I'm, I'm eating this, so I'm just gonna use my hands a little bit to, my clean hands to just rub some of that beautiful brown sugar. Mm -hmm. Using your hands is the best tool because you always <laughs> have them with you. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> you always have your tools. Yep. I never thought of using a brown sugar and whatnot instead of like flour for prepping a pan. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Next step is, I'll put this to the side. The next step is we're gonna mix our dry ingredients. We have the list, dry ingredients, we're gonna put it in a picture. And it's simple. If you have a box, you can just dump the whole box in the bowl. Um, otherwise, you would have to um, follow the recipe, which is the equivalent to one box of mochiko flour. And how do you spell that? Uh, M O C H I K O. And it's sweet rice flour. And okay.
And how many ounces does it say on the box or does it go by net weight? One to 16 ounces or one pound. Okay. The next thing, so we got the mochi for rice flour, meal, let me sift it. And then I'm going to take two. And then I'll add in the sugar. How is important is it to sift it? It's not, it's just, I don't like the lumps, you know? And especially um, when you add the baking powder, you don't want a pocket of baking powder. But if you don't have a sister, it's fine. Just make sure it's really well incorporated. Um, but yeah, I like to sift it because especially sometimes we live in such a moist area in Hawaii that, um, the flour, not flour, but the sugar gets clumpy. So that's why I like to sift it to kind of save my flour because I really don't want to buy more. <laughs> not flour, but my sugar. <laughs> okay, so we got, we got the sugar going in there. And no lumpy sugar. And then we're gonna take some baking. I mean, if I'm going too fast, for you guys that are following along, joining me. Okay, let's see. One second, I'm gonna um, refresh my laptop so I can see you guys. <laughs> I'm being on. I'm on one screen, and I want to see you too. One second, guys. Hang on. So so far, so far. You're not that good looking. <laughs> you guys are asking such great questions, and I love the engagement. Wow. I feel bad that I'm not cooking tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Normally I try to, just because I like to eat so much. Well, the good thing is you have the recipe, so you can... I'm writing it down. Thank you. At your leisure. Okay, so sorry, though. Yeah, Lulu, this is unusual that me and you aren't cooking. I know. I'm this not is... cooking because I'm, I'm visiting family who don't have an oven. Yeah. We're also going to uh, take a tablespoon of baking powder. Yeah, I heard okay. our, we're cooking I up feel a storm. like such a boy or just baking. watching and not cooking along. So a tablespoon or a teaspoon of baking a teaspoon, powder? Teaspoon, teaspoon, tea, sorry, I misspoke. Yep, okay. A teaspoon of baking powder. Oh, yeah, be careful. Okay. I always mess that one up. <laughs> Reading a recipe, I mess them up. Okay, so these, that's it for the dry ingredients. I'm just gonna mix this up until, so the baking powder really is well incorporated. Yeah. As I see it, it's a, just a slightly different whiter in color than the, uh, than the flour and the, the sugar. Uh, I'll show you, but all you just see is white dust, so. <laughs> Once it's uh, well incorporated, I'll just set it to the side and get started on our wet ingredients. All right. So for the wet ingredients, um, I'm gonna, I'll need my assistant to help me and get five eggs. While she's getting the eggs, um, butter, melted butter, the entire stick. I'm gonna go ahead and 
Yes. Salted or unsalted, does it matter or? Um, unsalted, yeah. Pop it in the microwave for a bit. There it is, one stick on it's the microwave. All right. Yeah. All right. So let's roll that heating up. Get some eggs. So our most of our eggs come from the mainland US, but we um, are fortunate to live uh, near one of the only two egg farms on, on Oahu. Mm. And so these eggs are all different colors because the chickens lay eggs in all different colors. Nice. So and my I... question about eggs is, do you put your eggs in the fridge or do you leave them out on the counter? We keep it in the different fridge. Different cultures do it different. Well, we live in very high temperatures, so to keep it, I guess, from hatching. Oh, yeah, from hatching. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, but. <laughs> Did you bring them to room temperature or are you using them fresh out of the fridge? Um, because I forgot to bring them to room temperature, I, it's just right from the fridge. But it, it um, really doesn't, it, this recipe is pretty forgiving. So right. I'm thankful for that. Yeah, some recipes are very, very specific, especially if baking. You know, baking is very temperamental with temperature, but this, it's very interesting. I'm just gonna mix these eggs. Yeah. Now it seems like I've seen babinka made with other types of flour. Um, you could, um, yeah. I so babinka is also made with cassava flour. Oh. And, that dog uh, made it before, yeah. Yeah, and which is just as delicious, but for me, it's a little harder to find cassava flour. I would have to go to the specialty market to find it. It's not like readily available. Like I could pick up a mochico in my area at CVS. So it's just, yeah, it's just a lot easier to to um, to get. But yeah, how was it? How was your bibinka with the cassava flour? Chewy. Chewy, yes. Yeah. yeah. It was, I imagine it, it would be. It has more of a unique chewy taste. Uh -huh. What did we make with Now, the have you ever powder? made babinka with with normal uh, normal rice flour instead of the sweet rice flour? I was just wondering. I haven't, but I'm, that's a great, I might try that. That might be fun. Mochiko is also known as glutinous rice flour. Mm -hmm. Correct. So that might help you. That might right. help you find what you need. That's that's sticky. Like the short grain rice. When they say sticky rice, it's that same type of rice, correct? I think so. So also going in is a whole can of coconut milk. I like that it, this recipe is everything, like the whole box of, the whole can of, because I feel like way too often it's like partially, and then you're like, what am I supposed to do with the rest of this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when creativity comes in, you know, you'll, you'll figure out how to, how to use it. Okay. So now we're also going to get one teaspoon, hard to see, just one teaspoon of vanilla. And I'm happy my friend made me homemade vanilla. Love her. Nice. And, um, mm. van vanilla it's amazing how much heat. better if you get it vanilla from the vanilla bean. Mm -hmm. 
You could put a little bit behind your ear like I may clamp it did for for perfume. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever watch the Beverly Hillbillies? <laughs> I did. Yeah, I don't remember that specifically, but that's that's awesome. <laughs> also need to milk. So so far, what's in here is egg. Yes. Uh, melted butter. One, uh, which is a whole stick or half a cup of melted butter, a whole can of coconut milk, and then we're gonna do one cup of milk. I melt in here because I was actually no, it's one in the pre-measured and then the pirates oh. well this closure I thought this was at four in the morning at my time so I I was ready to go and then I had to put my mouth back into the fridge <laughs> but it was already yeah, she was set up and messaged me she's like hey when are you guys gonna start I'm freaking out yeah I was just like Something happened with the Facebook event that said it was at four in the morning. <laughs> so what kind so, of milk is that? Is it whole milk or 2% or non-fat or does it matter? It's, you know, whole milk does taste better, you know, just because of the fattiness and the richness, but um, I have 2% on hand, so 2% it is. But yeah, I, I normally have 2% on hand, so. Yeah, but it, you know, when you, when you use um, high call, higher fat content and higher quality ingredients, um, when it's available, I like to use frozen coconut milk. Um, we have a brand called Hawaiian Sun and frozen is just so much uh, richer and a lot more coconut cream than the cans. I never heard of frozen coconut milk. Yeah, so we're lucky to have it, you know, in our freezer. But right now, um, a lot of our freezer things were, uh, you know, Thanksgiving items. And now it's they're trying to sell off the hams and the turkeys. So um, I would have loved to have frozen coconut milk to show you um, what it looks like. And um, it's, just a, it's, it's just a lot thicker in texture with the frozen but this the can is totally fine as well and it's much more readily available I do like the Thai brands um, of coconut milk um, yeah I'm I am actually in Thailand right now and I went to the store and I was overwhelmed by all the coconut milk options that I had no idea Hi there, I have a question. Good day now. Sure. So we ha also have coconut cream here in, in tins as well. So can you use that instead? And wouldn't that be thicker? It would be, I think it might be too thick. I would probably use a quarter of a cream of coconut cream. Um, yeah, the, the texture would be, might, might be too thick, but I'm interested in how that might work out. But yeah, I would suggest coconut milk. Okay, thanks. Okay, so everything's all incorporated. So we're just going to pour the batter. So, okay, I'm going to make a separate, so my sister's a camera, a camera woman today. And she does not like coconut milk. So I'm going to make her a little tiny. I don't like the shred. Okay. So I usually put the coconut in the entire batter. And I'm going to scoop some batter out just for her. Because she wants some. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> she loves me. As she should. <laughs> Everybody who's watching along, I put it in the chat. To finally got my computer to work. So. so typically you put it in a nine by 13 can. 
and bake it for about, check it out, check it out. It takes 40 minutes to an hour at 345, 345 degrees, but it all is very dependent on your altitude and your specific oven. So just gonna pour do you, a little bit. Do you always do it in the big pan? I like making them like in the cupcake tins myself, but it's more work to make them, but you get like more crisp being there. Uh, I do put it in a cake pan. Uh, you usually put it in a cake pan because I'm taking it for uh, a party. And now for everyone else, I'll add in the cookie. The coconut will just naturally just drip to the top of the pan. Are you going to toast it? You're right. Thank you for reminding me. I do like that toasty color. So happy you remind me. I think when you toast it, it also baby. stretches it out a lot. You can use a lot less coconut when you stretch toast it. Huh. And it probably gives it a different texture. Ooh. So with the coconut now coconut. you said you're doing it in the microwave. I've never done coconut in the microwave. Yeah, so you just put a really in a microwave safe uh, plate. Do just a very thin layer to get the coconut. You just really want that nutty coconut toasty flavor and color. And it's um, just going to be just so beautiful and brown. And I think that's what makes it distinctively bibinka is that coconut. Um, otherwise, it's just butter mochi, which is just as delicious. So I think so I'll recommend to do it for a minute on high and just to check on it. And then I usually do that for 30 seconds more. So, um, yeah. And um, as far as the coconut, I notice when I go shopping for coconut, you can get sweetened or unsweetened. It, what is yours? I think uh, it's your preference because of the sugar content in here. I usually go for unsweetened. Okay. Um, but today I, I have sweetened because um, that was what was on sale. Go bigger. Nice. Okay. <laughs> So either one will work. Absolutely. Uh, I have tried like a Trader Joe's version that's unsweetened and the I found that the coconut is just too hard. It was like kind of like eating matchsticks at that point. So um, I, I like this brand that's found at most stores, this big baker's brand or any brand that there's still some moisture in the coconut. Yep, yep. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. And probably okay. a brown, it definitely will brown a lot easier if it has sugar on it. Oh, good point. Oh, yeah, so now this is sweet it would. Like you're caramelizing so like it, right? Toasting it on, I like toasting it in the microwave because when it's faster, but you still get that brown color. And um, sometimes when I toast it, even on the stove, it's like an uneven toast. Like I got burnt bits and untoasted bits but when you put it in a very you have to really microwave. watch it on the stove yeah it's, oh yeah it cooks yeah. so fast it's really so hard, fast. hard to watch it's the like, stove so. it's so now cute. I always I'm sprinkled like, it right on the top like that might be cool though are, are you really going cool. to put it like incorporate it and mix it in? the thing or just yeah. sprinkle it on the top i'm gonna incorporate it into the mix yeah and it, it'll naturally flow it up to the top Ooh. anyway sometimes you'll get a little bite or two of the coconut in the batter but it just no naturally tends to flow 30 more seconds this is do you prefer this to butter mochi your kitchen is smelling so good now <laughs> Smell it. <laughs> Except for your sister, all that coconut smell is wonderful. <laughs> I still don't like the texture of the flakes. I like coconut milk. Oh, okay. 
so I wonder if you could do instead of the flakes, they have it where it's shredded coconut, where it's really small. And you get a similar toastedness, but not so much texture. I think, Lainey, don't they have a similar recipe to this in Brazil? Hi, everyone. Hi, Or. How's it going? What, what do you say? So, don't you have a similar coconut recipe in Brazil? I put it in the chat if you want to look at it. OK, I, I will show. It's a big I, I, You see, and I, I, because I just arrived, and then I didn't have time. Look oh, at wow. that toasted coconut. Mm. Yes, I, I, you see. Just a moment. Well, I, yeah, I was, was very, very careful to sprinkle it on the top, but you said you don't have to worry about it. It'll float to the top. You know what? Let's try it your way. I like it. I like it. No, no, no. Don't just. <laughs> or do half and half. My way is half harder work. Okay. Yeah. It's cooking together. We're cooking together. Okay, yeah. let's have it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> kind of like the uh, onion crispy things that you use for the green uh, green bean casserole. You put half in and then you sprinkle the other half on top. <laughs> yeah. I'll guarantee that it does. That's a great thing about food, you know. Just a uh, collaboration of ideas. Maybe it might be even better. Let's find out. Oops. See, I and like how different people take different recipes and then, you know, personalize it. That's what, a, for me, a recipe is like an outline. You know, oh. you're the artist and you take the outline and personalize it, put yourself into it. I agree. To, to personalize it with your own flavor, that, you know, your own, your own, your own love, you know, cooking is love. And, um, you know, when I cook, I think about who's going to eat and, you know, that I love them and, even if I'm tired and sweaty, I don't think about those things because I want to give them the best, you know, the best food, the best tasting food, the best ingredients that I can afford, you know, that's what it's all about for me. Yeah, for me, cooking is, I don't know, almost meditation. You have to focus on it and it leaves all the world's worries behind. You know, it, if you don't focus, that's when you burn the coconut and you can tell that you didn't put your love in it, right? But coconut that's used in this batter. Then we're gonna sprinkle or incorporate the rest of the coconut on top. Pretty. So pretty. So, I mean, basically the flavors, you have a little bit of vanilla, sugar, coconut milk, and then, of course, the pr predominant flavor is toasted coconut. I wonder if you could put other flavors besides vanilla in it. So I'm going to wrap it up. Is that too sweet? Where's that at? Though? At home. Yeah, that's actually. Oh, that, that's red one. Oh, some areas didn't get. We had someone new join. I tried putting cocoa powder in a similar recipe once. Oh. It was okay, but it just wasn't the same. Mm. We have chocolate. Yeah, I like trying different things, but usually it's just like stay with the basics. Around Thanksgiving, we also make pumpkin mochi. Which is basically Ooh. everything here, but with pumpkin spices. Don't forget the pumpkin. No, the French Oh, pumpkin. not with actual pumpkin. You're putting like pumpkin spices. Yeah. Like, do you so actually put pumpkin in it or you just do the pumpkin? With, um, no, just the, the pumpkin, like the pumpkin pie mix. 
spices. And because my Got sister it. has a special batter without cooking, I have to go watch it. So I'm thinking this will cook you up in mine later. 25 minutes. Maybe. Let's find out. That's it's interesting because in the Cayman Islands, they have the spice cake with, with the cassava flour and the pumpkin spice mix. And that's a regular dish that they do. Oh, yeah? Let's check this then. Well, actually, no. Yeah. Let's check it in the yeah, minute. You, could, you can buy They call it spice cake. I mean, it's, it's, it's like, I don't know. I've seen it with cassava. I've seen it with rice flour. I've seen it with regular flour, of course. Also, my favorite is pol mochi. Oh, no. Wait, okay. Poi mochi. You know poi, Hawaiian, Hawaiian staple. The purple gook that people don't like. It's so good. So it's ma uh, mashed taro. Uh, so it's steamed, peeled, something. And mashed taro with, and, and water to mm -hmm. make poi. And so, um, yeah, we, we have poi mochi and we have it similarly like in the bar form, you know, which we're baking today, but then also in like a donut, like a fried donut, like a, like an andagi. Um, I love the or, unique taste of taro. Yeah. But it's, uh -huh. it's a lot of work. <laughs> It is a lot of work. Process. Absolutely. But it's so worth it. Especially you, when you make your own. Yeah, if you own. have the luck of buying it processed already, do it. <laughs> I don't know. No, you can. They, they uh, sell poi in the stores over here. here. Yeah, it's already processed for us. Or we can find it like cleaned and boiled and peeled and chopped, prepared here. We're very lucky. Just putting my spices away. So, R, tell me about your. So to be um, honest, how often do you open the oven and check it? So I want to check it for like a half an hour, you know, and then I I kind of just peek, you know, and see how it's going. But because that that's a little batch for my sister, I'm gonna keep a, a close eye on it, and maybe. I just kind of check the middle with a fork to see if it's done for doneness. The texture should be, um, um, glute, so it's like glutinous. So it's um, so it, it's like a chewy, sticky texture. But so hold on, I'm gonna clean up my area. So I mean, it it never completely hardens. I think your assistant showed up to clean up the floor. <laughs> Oh, the cleaning crew has arrived. <laughs> yep. Well, this a is my Aaron usually has his show up yeah, to help him. He's snoozing right now. They're wearing pajamas because they're very <laughs> cold. They're not used to the 60 degree weather. Like yeah, that's Aaron. They, they have 60 degree weather in Hawaii right now, and everybody's freezing. I was. Just looking at her shirt and like, wow, it looks like summertime. The flowers in her hair. I mean. Well, I have a yeah, ring light, Karen's so in... it's pretty hot in the kitchen with the with the baking and the ring light. But right outside my door, it's nice and chilly. There's like high wind warning. There we have blizzards on our mountain, Mauna Kea, right now. Mm -hmm. So we have three mountains. That's no. Mauna Kea, Mauna Loa, and uh, Haleakala on Maui. So right now, um, a lot of my friends are showing pictures of the snow and um, they're bringing their their trucks up there to fill it up with snow and bringing it down the mountain <laughs> where they live so the kids can make snowmans for you know the Christmas season. Oh. And um, growing up, it was such a great memory. Like we would have someone go and bring us snow we would play with snow at the beach at like parties you know they, it was like a big treat for someone I never to thought in. of there being snow in hawaii the big yeah. island yeah but most other places no mm -hmm. mm. so i grew up in the big island um i um my that's where so when my grandfather came um from the philippines 
He married a Hawaiian woman and um, they had 19 children. And my grandfather is the number one. Out of wait, 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 wait. How many? 19. Wow. Okay. I one woman what... had 19? Absolutely. One any, woman. Any twins or triplets in that? None. All oh single, single births. God. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, didn't even get a TV show. <laughs> I mean, as you can imagine, there was, uh, um, I have so many cousins and so many family members and so much good memories of eating. Um, a lot of my uncles. Um, so in my family, in my Filipino side, the men cook. All the men cook. And they are fabulous cooks. Everything is clean. Everything is prepared right. And so they hunt and they clean and prep and um, party parties take like at least three days of cooking involved. Uh -huh. And like if it was a first birthday party, um, first birthday parties are very special in Hawaiian culture um, because a lot of babies didn't make it their first year in the 1800s. And so um, that cultural tradition still is um, today um, very much so um, a, a large part of um, our celebrations. Even with COVID, we still have large drive-through baby, baby celebrations. And um, yeah, so um, back to my uncles and um, growing up, um, I was, a lot of the young, us young kids were recruited to be like the ch the choppers, so mm -hmm. just chopping onions and peeling potatoes and um, chopping bell peppers. Um, so that was my function, and um, everyone worked together for a party. So um, we didn't cater. Everyone, you know, had a job and a skill and showed up and all the hands come together to make this party happen. And the um, at the first birthday celebration, um, or actually any celebration, it's to share with your neighbors. So mm -hmm. parties have typically at least 100, 200,000 maybe, you know, people to show up. And there's people that, uh, the help out with certain things and certain committees and you know people go out to get fish and then there's like fried fish and lo lobster and um, crabs and um, opihi which are limpets and vana which are sea urchins which are adults sea so we've always had a culture of food and a multicultural food scene here in Hawaii um, we're very fortunate and lucky to have a lot of Pacific Rim cuisine. Um, and those items are regularly found in my grocery store. So um, it wasn't until I moved to the US mainland, uh, I lived in Tennessee for a little bit, that I realized a lot of my cultural, a lot of the things that I cooked regularly were Asian. And um, so I was so fortunate to find Asian um, small stores in Tennessee. But um, yeah, it wasn't a realization until I was out of Hawaii that I was like, oh, a lot of the things that I eat every day with rice is Asian. <laughs> we call uh, soy sauce shoyu. And um, yeah, so <laughs> it says rice is hard I, to find. I am very excited that you were willing to come on here and, and you know, honor at this time, the, you know, the story of, tell us a little bit more about the story. You said December 20th is the anniversary of the Filipino workers coming to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Now, did they come on their own or was it like so the it US was where we had the slave trade? So, <laughs> yes and yes. So the Hawaii <laughs> Sugar, the Hawaii Sugar um, Association, which was a large, um, uh, monopoly that were um, primarily comprised of U.S. businessmen uh, overthrew the Hawaiian government and uh, took 
a lot of our land um, for um, business purposes because they learned that in this tropical environment, sugar grow it's a you know very profitable cash crop. Sugar and pineapple. Sugar and pineapple. So, um, so once the overthrow happened and of our queen of our queen Liliwo Kalani, um, they they started to bring in contract laborers from different parts of the the Pacific to to work the fields, um, the the sugar fields. And so they, they brought in laborers from Japan, from Okinawa, from the Azores in the Portugal. Um, they also brought in contract laborers from China um, and the Philippines. Um, so in the social caste system- And when you say contract laborers. Yes, so they, they signed a contract. In my contract mind, the contract labor is, yeah, the, so they were in my mind, they signed a contract to pay for the trip, and then they take like five years to pay for oh, the trip. Absolutely. So that's exactly what happened. They, they, they signed their, their life savings, and they would save up every single money to, you know, send home to their family. But you know, the, the plantation store also increased their pricing. And so they just had barely enough to survive. Um, if you can imagine the, the, the conditions of work were very harsh. Um, just sugarcane, especially our variety of sugarcane, there's all these fibers on the stock that are like um, fiberglass. Oh yeah, you know, I've seen pictures of sugarcane workers, like all the little cuts in their hands. Oh yeah. It's like amazing it's painful. pictures so if you can imagine um long days like a zillion little water. paper cuts yeah oh yeah with the luna so the luna were either american or um portuguese because of racism they uh, they they um they assigned the portuguese to be a higher class uh, system so the portuguese were on horseback and they were the lunas which are the, the bosses. And then the lowest class would be the Filipinos. Um, they, the darkest. Uh, darkest yeah. and also the last migration of workers. Yeah, so Filipinos have been there here for 115 years. They have changed our society um, and our culture. And predominantly a quarter of our population is Filipino because they all came as single men and couldn't bring over their brides or their families. So what's in doing our own uh, family history and genealogy, <laughs> we found out that my grandfather, great grandfather, excuse me, was already married. He had two children and was married. And when he came over to, the, uh, to Hawaii, um, he lied about his age for one thing and lied that he was single. And um, made 19 kids. Made 19 kids here in Hawaii. <laughs> So, um, so it was pretty cool kind of researching that and finding um, marriage records in the Catholic church. I'm like, wait a minute, that's the same person, same age, same place. Huh. So, <laughs> so he had so, 21 kids total. You're yes. right. Yes, he had 21 or more. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> but my great grandmother definitely had 19. Oh, yeah, yeah, 20, yeah, 21. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing the history and culture. Does anybody have any questions about the cooking? <laughs> the, the, um, I, I like how forgiving this is because, again, I've seen this in made with cassava flour, I've seen it made with, well, this is the first time I've seen it made with this the sweet rice flour. I've I feel like I've seen it made with regular flour. I mean not regular flour, regular rice flour. Mm -hmm. Um that would I come mean, out regular I'm flour working. is just a coconut cake, right? I mean uh -huh. it's, it's, huh. I think that might be interesting, just regular rice flour. And so the sweet rice flour. Hmm. Do you know if it's 
if um, sweet rice is more like short grain rice is more glutinous than like long grain rice, you know, I don't know. Does anyone know? Well, it, it is. I mean, basically, it breaks down more. You know, I mean, I've seen, I've seen a uh, Chinese version that, you know, they don't or I mean, what, what is it? Um, Latin rice um, desserts where they don't, they cook it in the pot mm -hmm. and they just keep cooking it until the rice breaks down. You know, it's yeah, traditionally it's it's well the rice on the down. fire and kind of, you know, like on hot cold and steamed and cooked in an earthenware pot. And um, I don't have any of those, <laughs> including a fire. Yeah, like, I live in a so. <laughs> capturing traditional taste with modern technology that's right <laughs> yeah. well that's what i like about recipe and a recipe is for me an outline to you know help i don't know personalize it and i re i really like how you have explained how um i mean in a hundred years how a traditional Filipino recipe has been, I mean, really, if you look at it, it's very slightly different. It's just you have rice flour more available than cassava flour. I feel like it's very similar to traditional uh, Filipino babinko, but I'm not an expert. Well, rice is also very an unstable food in the Philippines. And um, there's even, you know, preferences on rice. You know, um, the rice that we typically eat with food is like a, is a medium grain and, um, and a specific brand. Um, so yeah, we, we can taste when someone knows how to make rice. And, <laughs> yeah or not you know and it's um everyone has their own Ooh, way of cooking so i want to do a whole show that all it is is i have like five people on that all teach me their method of making rice i feel like i keep trying and i do not feel like i can make rice correctly i feel um, definitely modern making rice for 30 years but <laughs> so if you would like to be one of the people on to you know or know uh I, honestly it should be a ideally like five old grandmas from five different cultures and they all find out wait a second we all make it the same way no <laughs> i think it depends on your tradition because you get the long grain, it's more separated, it's not as glutinous, it's more from India or the Himalayas. Then you get the short grain, which is more glutinous and sticky, which is, you know, more like you think of Japan or Japanese style rice. So it's your culture. I don't, I think it's more the type of rice. I was just reading, there's over 40,000 different species of the grain of rice. So it's more of what you're shooting for and your style of cooking than it is how you cook it necessarily. It's the actual grain that you're choosing, whether it's long, medium, or short. Yeah, so I've been doing this cooking together for five years. And at this point, I have 11 or 12 different typical types of rice in my kitchen nice. because- wow. You know, different people use different types of rice. Um, and one thing Aaron pointed out that we keep saying glutinous rice, it's actually gluten free. It's just talking about. And so for me, I am gluten sensitive. So I tend to eat rice more than, you know, wheat flour stuff. So I have. Um, quite a bit of different types of non-wheat flour. I didn't know that stuff, by the way. I just copied and pasted after looking it up on the internet. Oh, okay. 
So, um, all right, any other questions? Thank you so much. I mean, once, once that's done, um, I don't, we're not one of those, um, I don't know, fancy professional shows where we say, you put this one in the oven and then you take another one out. We long time ago said, we do not do that. We want to show how things really happen. Thank you, because I didn't so, really want to waste another one. <laughs> this, is, this is the time where you usually sit around with your friends and have some snacks and a drink and do a lot of um, chatting like we're doing. This is normal in most food cultures is, or you cook, you know, five or six different things at the same time. I do have a question. Is it going to come out like a cake or is it going to be creamier in the center? Is it like you could put the toothpick in and it's supposed to come out with nothing sticking to it? Or how do you know yep. when it's done? So I usually take a fork and stick it in. If it comes out clean, it's done. Okay. Um, so after 40 minutes, that's when I kind of check on it every five minutes to see you know, if it's done in the center. Um, it will not be cake-like. It will be more like a mochi um, uh, in consistency. The top will be, uh, um, the top will be browned and <clears throat> a little bit harder, but the, uh, the middle layer and the bottom layer will be like a, like a smooth, um, sticky, not sticky, but there's no good way. I was trying to think of a good way to describe yeah. it. That wasn't like gelatinous mess. <laughs> just but like, it's no it's longer gooey and chewy no but it's, it's like, you know have you ever had mochi ice cream before at all or mo any type of mochi well mochi to me is just the outside and the inside is like a the ice cream so you're talking about the covering of a mochi Ball. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. That rice um, dessert, Got it. Lulu, uh, similar to a uh, baked quiche. Have you done that where you baked like the egg? And you know it's quiche. it's oh. it's a bit it's a very top, chewy. But still, like, yeah. Right. I I'm just the question was more. It's not cakey. It's more um, set. It's more like not necessarily a pudding, but it's a set. Well, it's got egg. It's got five eggs in it, so it's gonna set like egg set, like a custardy kind of thing. I'm gonna take a Correct. peek and see what it's looking like so far. Nice. So my friend actually makes hers with a layer of custard on top that she saves like half the batter as an extra egg and puts a layer of custard. My husband likes it like that, but. Ooh. You can, this way, mm. like, this recipe, you can tweak it to your preference. Mm -hmm. nice. So if you like it well, more than I, I wonder, because I've seen it where, you know, um, babinka, and then you, yeah, make a separate, like, cream or custard or jam or something that you put on top of it. Um, yeah. Instead of putting the coconut in it. You just make a basic one with not much flavor, and then you put flavors on top of it. Yeah, so we have um, this like, thing called haupia, which is a coconut and cornstarch uh, mixture. And coconut sitting jello. Yeah, so it's like a, yeah, it's like a coconut. So we make this coconut sauce. Um, basically, it's just coconut milk and sugar and cornstarch. And you're, you can put it on the, the coconut after it's done, the, the bibinka after it's done. Um, so that's kind of like a, a match. I mean, that's like a fancier version. And if oh, you're going to a family easy. event, you're going to just make the basic cake. You're not going to, you know, make uh, more work. Because, um, <laughs> like, like, again, I like making them in the cupcake tins where you make the individual ones. But again, that like, triples the baking hassle. So if you're making small amounts versus, you know, 
it's it's definitely the, much easier to just put it in the baking pan. The nice thing about the cupcakes is it cuts your cooking time way down. So I mean, the work you spend in filling the little cupcake things, it's kind of a balance because you're not a cupcake doesn't cook near as long as a full, no. you know, sheet pan kind of thing. Yeah, we'll definitely cut yeah but once it's in the oven, you don't have to watch it. I mean, it's, you just it's shorter scary. time. Yeah. True. Oh, I really regret not cooking tonight. I am getting so hungry for this with all this talking of toasted coconut and coconut creaminess. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but I have the recipe. Oh, I need to put your name on it. <laughs> yep for for me it's um well it was i mean i uh, pile in so it's um morning time the sun's just coming up so <laughs> right. oh you're All in right. thailand are you on vacation um partially vacation partially visiting family so that's the best thing you ate here so far. A couple of days ago, so. Oh. <laughs> um, last night I went to a street food festival, so oh. it was what I couldn't. I mean, you know, I. It was everything was like I don't know two dollars a, a plate, oh, and so I just was like, ah, it's like uh, all the chip, the choices. So, <laughs> all right. Um, any final questions? Otherwise, I'll stop the recording and then we can continue to socialize. But what were the questions that you had for us? I, I do have another question about the recipe. I'm sorry to interrupt. So when it comes out, do you pop it out of the pan? Do you scoop it out of the pan? Do you let it cool? What's the process on that? So I let it cool to room temperature and then I just kind of flip it on a um, on a on a cutting board, and I get a um, I spray my knife with cooking spray, just so it won't stick to the knife. Or use a plastic knife, or you can also use a a, a waxed um, um, dental floss that's not not minty. <laughs> right. So the layer on the bottom, what was on the bottom becomes the top. So you've got your brown sugar and butter on the top, and then the coconut flakes will then be on the bottom as the, you know, the other half of the coconut flakes would be on the bottom as a base um, when you flip it. So it does get flipped. Um, I kind of just cut it and then I usually serve it in, you know, because I'm taking it to, I usually take it to parties. Yeah. So I you can know, put it, pop it in a cupcake, you know, these were three cents, yay for clearance after Halloween clearance, you know. <laughs> and just, oh, so, um, you sco so you scoop it out and put it into little cupcake holders to serve? I do, yeah. So they, they, they're, I put it to and put it, I bought maybe two and a half, two, two and a half inch squares and okay. put it into trays and serve it up so it's more easy for now i could see work. myself making a mistake here which is because you have that brown sugar on the bottom i could see that i would just take the pan let it cool and then go to take it to the party but that brown sugar would stick the whole thing to the bottom you'd want to pop it out of the pan probably or you think yeah. have you taken the whole pan just straight to a party other uh, uh no we run away you don't do that hard to scrape it off the pan yeah all right you, you're you need a yeah because once that brown sugar gets hard i mean cools off it'll be hard as yeah i could see myself making that mistake i'm just like oh it's done take it out of the oven i don't have time for it to cool let's go to the party <laughs> and then by the time it gets to the party it's you're not being able to get it out of the pan we're lucky that in Hawaii, it's so. still, it's usually, you know, 80 degrees year round, but, you know, with this freak uh, windstorm that's cold happening. Cold snap. Cold snap. Cold, cold fronts. Sorry, cold fronts. Um, yeah. I, I'm so, because it's cold right now. It's down to would, 60 um, degrees. It's 68 degrees. Oh, cool. that's not bad. It was super cold, much more colder this morning. I don't know. I didn't check what time, I mean, how cold it was, but I was like, whoa. 
We were watching Hallmark movies under a blanket. <laughs> and all my dogs have, I have three dogs, and they all have their jammies on because they were, they were shivering. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, getting back to flipping it, it after it's room temperature, it does kind of pop right out onto the, your cutting board. It, it does. Just, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Well, it's well used. Yeah. 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 But don't wait too long again where that sugar cools down enough to stick. Yeah. 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 I would say it might be just it's still warm. Yeah. It's still warm. Yeah. Yeah. Is it something you can I've made that mistake fold? with, um, what do you call it? A, a Caribbean rum cake, uh, the bun cake, where you're supposed to put the brown sugar underneath. And it's a similar, it's a cake, but it's a bun cake. And then I waited too long to pop it out of the pan. And yeah, it was stuck. So. Is this something you can also store in the refrigerator after and eat it cold or would you warm it up? Oh it out room temperature because it does change the texture of the um the mochi it gets um it dries it out it's still edible but <laughs> it just hard. dry it's a lot harder and not, not soft and chewy anymore so i can i leave it out just maybe three days at the max because then the butter will start to yeah get might get rancid so okay thanks so, I usually bring it to a party and there's no leftovers. <laughs> Isn't that the best? Yeah. Um, I, I was what talking to somebody know? where they made something cultural and they brought it to an American party and nobody knew what it was. And they felt so embarrassed. And the daughter actually bribed somebody to try it. And once they tried it, they were like, oh, this is so good. And it disappeared once someone tried it. But it was, you know, something culturally, you know, different. And people were like, ooh, weird. And <laughs> well, who's going to bring yucky things to a party, right? I never know. But stuff I like. <laughs> I think you need to, uh, I think it's, I love to try things and to, you know, experience different cultures. And um, I think it's really important to, if you do bring something new, to really encourage your guests to like, you know, just try it. It's, you know, Explain what the it worst is. you can, can do is get tired. You know, that's just the worst, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the worst is an allergic reaction. That's true. Yeah, we're, I'm kind of glad that we live in a multicultural um, part of the United States where we eat different foods and different cultural foods and um, all the time. So trying something new is kind of like, ooh, give me that. You know, I want to try some. Um, I love trying new yeah. desserts, new food, new coffee, new, yeah. It's, it's super fun. Um, We'd be great friends. <laughs> I had, <laughs> it's like, I had chicken feet at the Thai food fair mm -hmm. last night. So. Oh, okay. oh, chicken feet. I thought you said chicken feet at first with a D. <laughs> so how, no, did it, how was it prepared? Like, how was it, um, what was the flavor like? It was a, it was a Penang curry. It was just, you know, a, a, a curry, um, yeah, over rice. So, um, and then. That's awesome. You know, it's yeah, awesome what? to try something you're in that part of the, you know, you're in that part of the world and, you know, try eating. I'll, I'll report in let, next time. I didn't buy the, the, uh, it was, water bugs or sea bugs i didn't know what that was so mm -hmm. i was just like oh, i'm not gonna try it it turns out it's just some I looked it up it's some kind of you know just um seaweed it looks like a bug mm -hmm. so. <laughs> so all right any well, any final questions about the cookies otherwise 
Thanks so much. This has been, I, I love when I actually learned stuff be, beyond just cooking because food is part of culture, but um, it's just the ability to share love through food passed on through, it brings together culture, it brings together people. I mean, right now we've got people from five different countries on here. So thank you everybody for sharing love. Thank you. Do you have any final words? I just had a thought when you do your uh, your grandma and rice recipe, um, have them talk about how rice is important in their culture. Maybe there's some mythological connections, you know, to and uh, cos cosmo uh, cosmogony stories, you know, with their rice. Um, we don't particular have any in the Hawaiian culture. We didn't grow rice. Yeah, we have for all the native we, food. Here. But we have a we have a um, we have an origin story with our taro, you know, mm. as an ancestor to the Hawaiian people. And coconut. Ooh. Oh, yeah. yeah, and coconut. <laughs> and, and pronounce your first name, please. Sure, it's Hivalani. Hivalani. Nice. Nice to meet you, and thank you so much for sharing this recipe. I'm looking forward to making it. Yeah, let me know in the event. <laughs>